Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So the Dallas Cowboys advanced to two and three with a Greg Zerline field goal uh, as time expires going up 37-34, defeating the New York football giants. But um, it's probably the most joyless victory I've experienced that I can remember as a fan of any, really any of the teams I support. Um, in a good while, uh, obviously based upon the Dak Prescott ankle injury, gruesome injury, and tragic. Middle of the third quarter, scrambling, just trying to make a play as he always has for this football team over the last five seasons, putting everything on the line as he's always done for this football team. And um, all it takes is one play, right? And it's – that was – I was speechless – um, and it's one of the moments where, you know, 2020 sucking and sucking more, right? And watching his, the pain on his face and understanding where he is, what he's been trying to do from a health, mental health awareness standpoint and you, using his platform to help people and help others while he's also battling and grieving the loss of his older brother, grieving the loss of his mother, grieving the loss, um, you know, of just his own system, his people, right? And then now you add in depression in there and being real about it, open about it. Um, so I do pray, well, I know he will put the work in to, to, to recover, and after they have a surgery, they have the best, you know, Cowboys, the whole NFL, they have the best medical staff available. He'll get back. Uh, but it will be some dark days for him. And this is something that Andrew Luck talked about uh, when he decided to retire young, right? Uh, it's not the football that took me out. It was, you know, 5 a.m. recovery and, and having to do that process over and over again. And, and Dak has been as durable as anyone we've had, right? And so when I mean, you think about all the injuries we've had, guys in and out, in and out, in and out, except for Dak until now. He hasn't really had to deal, I mean, he's had to deal with treatment and, you know, knick-knack things, but nothing like this. So um, I'm I'm hurting for, for him. I, I, I love the guy. He's been one of my favorite athletes to ever root for, to cheer for, because he's made it so easy, right? Uh, when you watch a guy come up, A, understanding how he was raised, how he, was grow how he grew up, his development at Mississippi State, going from somebody who, you know, you thought was, you know, a decent college quarterback to, okay, this guy's a real pro prospect to, oh, this guy's balling out at the senior bowl and, and there's some upside here that somebody could develop as a project and we draft them. We're that team that drafts him. And then Tony goes down. And the one thing I will, why I've always been a fan of Dak Prescott is the professionalism. Always ready when called upon. Even in that moment then, Kellen Moore was injured as well. And not only did Dak step, step up, he thrived in that moment. And as he was going through his growing pains of developing as a quarterback and, you know, Zeke gets suspended and we have, the, the locker room controversies and all this type of stuff. He's, he was always the steady force for us. And that's how he became the leader of the Dallas Cowboys, the unquestioned leader of the Dallas Cowboys and a leader in this league. Look how guys have responded to him since he's started the mental health awareness platform. Look at the, the way guys have responded today. And, and I thought Tony Romo's words in terms of this reverberating throughout the league was is very accurate, right? Because at the end of the day, the league is still a community. And, you know, seeing Jason Garrett run across the sideline, I mean, that was the storyline coming into the day is Jason Garrett returning to Dallas uh, as the offensive coordinator of the New York Giants and Tony Romo's calling the game. It's just a lot of connect connections, old relationships. And that goes down in front in the midst of all of that. And I don't know what that thread there is and I'll have to think about it, but yeah, it was, it was tough. And I know 
the point of the video is to recap the games, but sometimes it's bigger than football and it's bigger than the game. And my favorite player um, that that I love in the NFL is is gone. It sucks. Uh, and yeah, it just sucks. It just sucks. So get well soon. Dak Prescott, keep your head up. It's it's going to be a tough recovery with that the injury we saw, but we've seen a lot of guys come back from it and and heal up. But the you know I know a lot of people are going to come on here and talk about the business side of things, him being on a franchise tag, betting on himself, taking that risk, and that that goes to a greater discussion of the NFL structure on you know compensation for the players. This is why I've always been saying that the players union is, is not strong enough and, and they need to do more to better compensate their players for the amount of money and the revenue that they generate. Um, and millionaires will always lose to billionaires. It is what it is. Um, but I think the one thing you can say, regardless of what stance you have with, oh, Dak getting paid and all this type of stuff, please stop with the narratives that he was a greedy person who didn't care about winning and was trying to rack up stats. If you look at that man's face and, and you see the way others respond around him, either you don't want to get it, you don't really understand sports, or, um, you know, I, I just can't see how you can have still have such a take after after something like this. And who knows how much money, um, hopefully, you know, he may have an insurance policy, who knows, but... Um, We'll, we'll see the long-term ramifications of that. I'm glad some of the guys stepped up today that have been paid and have gotten that security. You know, Demarcus Lawrence made a huge play today, helping us with a, with a fumble, um, sack fumble for Anthony Brown to get a touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott held it down when Andy Dalton came in there. Um, Zach Martin's always been playing at a professional level. Jalen Smith was was better today. Um you know, Everson Griffin still struggles with outside contain, but at least he made a couple plays. So at least the people who are getting some money have stepped up. Not necessarily Everson Griffin because he's on a $6 million deal, but everybody else. Now, bigger picture here, because there's a couple things we got to discuss, right? We currently lead the NFC East now, and it's a bad – A, it's a bad division. So you, if you can try to win the division, win the division. I hear a lot of people saying – is this an opportunity to tank? Absolutely not, for several reasons. Number one, you wouldn't have signed Andy Dalton, uh, who has been a starter in this league for over 10 years. I knew Andy would be a professional when given the opportunity and be ready to when called upon. And again, the same way Dak was working with a rookie center who was our backup to start, two undrafted right, you know, the right and left tackle. Andy was going to have to come in there and, and also manage that, and we'll have to continue to manage that throughout the season. Uh, but we know over the next few weeks is when we'll really be able to evaluate Andy. But him coming in here um, in relief of Dak Prescott, able to make some big throws to Michael Gallup and help win this football game, that's what you pay your backup quarterback for. And that's why I've been banging the table for us to have uh, somebody like this, a capable backup that can play at a starter level, now, what you expect from Andy Dalton throughout the entire season, there is going to be a drop-off from Dak Prescott in terms of some of the throws that Andy can make and the things you'll be asking him to do, whether it's in the RPO game or just even identifying certain things because of the, the reps and, and the level that Dak had ascended to. Um, but this is also something where, and this is going taking me back to the tanking, the coaches... Andy Dalton being in there, A, is going to have the coaches get back to the run game. Of, they're going to have to be balanced. They can't do the 50 attempts per game. They're going to have to figure out that balance, especially with a, with a mash unit offensive line. But they're also trying to identify and find themselves as a staff. They're trying to find themselves, right? Like, you can't afford to tank if you're Mike Nolan and your job's already on the line and people are already trying to kick you out. What are, you, what are you trying to tank for? And the psychology that that puts in your team's head, that's loser speak. That is loser speak. I've never, ever, ever been pro, pro tanking. Um, every game, that staff should be trying to win the game. That coaching staff, there's never a moment where you're like, well, 
I understand, hey, the season is getting away from us. Let's put some younger guys in and watch them develop. But no matter who is in there, and if the, the organization wants to evaluate a quarterback or evaluate XYZ player on defense, fine. But you always have to do your best, you know, put your best foot forward to try to win every game. And that should be the only uh, mentality and talk that is in your building. This idea of tank, if, if you bring up tanking, that's just like, like, have you ever played a sport? Like, why would you show up every day at 5 a.m. to freaking tank? Like, that's not the, like, we're the Dallas Cowboys, right? Like, in 2015, yeah, we lost and we ended up 4-12. and 12. But the, if you remember, all those games were close because they were trying to freaking win. They just didn't have the quarterback. They didn't have the horses to get them over the hump at the end of the games. But they were trying to win. It's not like they were, like, mailing it in and, and, and purposely sitting people out and all those type of things. I, I don't believe in that. If you, if you can play – Play to win. Play to win the game. Herm Edwards. Like that, Mike Nolan can't, have, like they need to try to fix the defense over the, the rest of the season. They need to figure out how to cut down on the turnovers on offense. They got to figure out, you know, cleaning those things up throughout the season. They may not, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. They may make the playoffs for money in the division, but they're not. But the thing which you can do is setting yourself up moving forward for next year. So when, if it's Dak Prescott at quarterback or somebody else, whatever the organization decides to do, you do it in a manner of we have winner's mentality. Let me give you an example. Uh, ben Roethlisberger went down last year, I think in the second game of the season. The Pittsburgh Steelers had a disastrous backup quarterback situation. Remember, they were playing Mason Rudolph and Doug Hodges and, and getting really, really poor quarterback play, like worse than, way worse than what we'll see with Andy Dalton. They competed. They made a trade for Minka Fitzpatrick. They competed all the way down the stretch. They didn't make the playoffs, but they tried their best um, to 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 get there. And because of that, they ended up, you know, ha coming through, getting Ben back. But they developed themselves, and a lot of those younger players, guys like a Devin Bush, they drafted Claypool this year. Like the things that they've put in place within their infrastructure of winning and having a culture of winning they did everything in their power no matter who was in there week to week and that's what I want to see from the Dallas Cowboys because the great organizations the great teams maximize on the draft or no matter where they are in the draft and that's the type of team that's the type of organization the Cowboys need to be I don't need to be up here trying to be like oh we need to get in the top five so we can draft somebody rant you know whatever like no those teams don't win, okay? So we have to have a have to have a mindset of, of winning, and I'm glad they pulled it out today, and 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 showed some some backbone. I think that's something for Mike McCarthy to build on. But we'll see what the, comes of this team moving forward. Um, Andy, I, I feel you know, I, I do think that they need to do one of the virtual QB things and sign another another quarterback, like uh, what the Eagles did with Josh McCown, and have them. You know, another veteran guy that may understand what Mike McCarthy wants to do or this old Scott Linehan, Kellen Moore guy, uh, just to be ready in case. Because right now, I think it's just Dalton and then Ben DiNucci, who is a seventh-round rookie. So that's your quarterback situation as it presently stands. But um, good on this team. Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, uh, Zeke, everybody on defense, when it mattered, stepping up. So. Uh, celebrate the win, sucks, uh, and get well soon, Dak Prescott. Peace.